Ukraine has lost 20% of its economy in the last year, and the country's international reserves have fallen from 20 billion to 7 billion euro. Now, Moody's recently suggested that the likelihood of a default on government debt is now virtually 100%. This is largely a consequence, of course, of the war in the east of the country. But Ukraine's pro-Western government says it's more determined than ever to rebuild the country's shattered economy, restore international confidence, while confronting the corruption and cronyism that have haunted the nation since the fall of communism. I'm joined in the studio by Ukraine's economy and trade minister. Ivaras Abramovichus. Mr. Abramovichus, thank you so much for being with us on France 24. Uh, you're a former investment banker. You were chosen by President Poroshenko to overhaul the country's economy. Now, together with Finance Minister Natalie uh, Yarisko and the Health Minister, uh, you are part of uh, Mr. Poroshenko's uh, international team, so to say. You were born in Vilnius. Uh, Yash uh, Yarisko was born in Chicago. Uh, and the Health Minister is Georgian. Uh, you all received uh, Ukrainian passports the very day you were sworn in, uh, back in December last year. First, a personal question. Why did you decide to quit your job as an investment banker and uh, become Ukraine's economy minister? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, well, first of all, even though I'm Lithuanian, I have been uh, living in quite a few other places uh, uh, around the world, the US, uh, Sweden, uh, Estonia, Russia as well. And uh, I have a wife uh, with whom uh, we are married for 10 years, who is Ukrainian, all three kids of mine are born in Kiev, so I'm not uh, very much uh, foreign uh, to Ukrainians' uh, problems and hopefully prospects as well. And after a fairly successful career of 18 years in uh, investment management uh, uh, and uh, after living uh, on the main street of Kiev during all of his Maidan uh, revolution uh, demonstrations, uh, I uh, took a decision that uh, perhaps my experience uh, uh, would uh, be needed uh, for Ukraine to, uh, to carry forward. So when the time came, when the new faces uh, showed up uh, in the Ukrainians' uh, leadership, uh, I got a phone call and I gladly uh, accepted it. Now, on Tuesday, uh, Moody's uh, downgrade, downgraded Ukraine's debt to the second lowest level, suggesting that the likelihood of a default on government debt is virtually now 100%. First, do you share that analysis? It should not come as a surprise, uh, Ukrainian economic uh, troubles last year, economic decline uh, almost 7%. This year, we forecast uh, that economy by inertia will go down 5.5%. But uh, once we stabilize financial situation, uh, once we uh, stabilize the exchange rate, uh, in parallel, we do reforms. Uh, we expect to return to economic growth already next year. Ukrainian bonds are trading at 50 cents to the dollar. So market is already expecting a restructuring. A restructuring of the debt, and that's precisely what your government uh, is asking for at the moment. Are you getting signals that your partners are ready to give Ukraine what it wants, i.e. Uh, a haircut or whatever it takes? Absolutely. We have a constructive dialogue with the private bondholders. Uh, government of Ukraine has hired Lazard. Uh, Minister of Finance is leading these efforts. She spent the whole week last week uh, in the U.S., this week, uh, she's in the UK speaking to the largest bondholders, and uh, I hear that we have a very constructive dialogue about sustainability of debt of Ukraine, about the uh, possibility to return to the financial markets as soon as 2017. Uh, but then again, uh, Russia also owns a significant chunk of your debt. Uh, I believe a three billion loan must be repaid by the end of the year and Moscow is in no mood uh, to negotiate. Will this put you once again on collision course with the Kremlin? We have not received any direct uh, messages or requests from our Russian counterparts, and we obviously expect uh, that debt from Russia will be treated just like debt from all the other uh, debt holders. Earlier this month, and that's part of the good news, the IMF approved a four-year aid program worth around 15.5 billion euro. Uh, the 5 billion euro is to be paid immediately. Uh, meanwhile, the EU has pledged the loan of 2.2 billion euro. Germany, Sweden, Canada uh, and Japan have also promised to step up to the plate. Will this be sufficient to keep the government afloat at least for the next few months? The damage from the war, the fallout uh, on the economy is, is, is massive. Uh, we have lost a considerable amount of territory which was heavily industrialized. A big chunk of 
export revenue in hard currency is no longer available to Ukraine, so uh, economic troubles are quite deep. Plus, uh, economic policies of the Yanukovych regime were completely appalling. There was a complete lack of uh, reforms in the past 23 years. New government is obviously committed to change uh, the perception, and we have already some tangible uh, results. Uh, so, um, as much as possible, financial aid uh, from our Western partners is needed to stabilize the financial situation in the shortest And uh, are the current time. figures I just quoted sufficient at the moment? It is important that uh, the program is uh, fr as front-loaded as uh, possible because exchange rate deterioration is uh, one of the main problems. So in additional international financial assistance will help replenish central bank reserves, stabilize exchange rate, and uh, return the confidence to the banking system, which is very important. Now, of course, these loans come with strings attached to them, um, reforms that the IMF wants to see uh, in, uh, in Ukraine. What is your priority? Are we looking at uh, drastic spending cuts, an increase in energy prices? Uh, we are attempting uh, and we are committed uh, to uh, perform uh, an enormous amount of uh, very uh, uh, important reforms. And these reforms are not needed for IMF, World Bank or EU. These reforms are needed for Ukrainians. And we are committed uh, to them. Main reforms include energy sector. Uh, we will uh, unbundle uh, the state monopoly nafta gas. We will invite Europeans and our Western uh, partners from North America to invest into our oil and gas uh, system. Um, obviously, fighting corruption is the most important uh, item here because uh, other reforms uh, will stumble if corruption fight uh, is not uh, addressed, and we can discuss that into more detail. From a Ministry of Economy point of view, which is a coordinator of majority of these reforms, main reform is deregulation. We need to allow business to start to breathe. We need to decrease the role of state in the economy. Second reform is state-owned enterprise reform. Many of these companies have been running for the benefit of some private individuals. And we already made some changes, and these are visible over the past weeks, where we return control of some of the key industrial state-owned companies back to the state. Deregulation, state-owned enterprises, public procurement, and restructuring of the ministry itself. And we want to make investment climate substantially better. We are 96 in the world right now. In one year, we expect to go up 25 places, and in two years, we expect to be top 50 in the world. Now, attracted, uh, attracting uh, international investors is, is part of your mission. This is uh, partly the reason you're visiting Paris this week. How do you convince foreign investors to invest in Ukraine? Because what they want to see first is, is peace in the east of the country. They're very wary of the current situation. Yeah. Peace, of course, is very much needed. I had a good discussion uh, this morning with MEDEF, uh, the Association of uh, French uh, Businesses, uniting uh, 800,000 uh, uh, French companies. Many of them operate in Ukraine already. Their troubles uh, are quite uh, well known uh, to the government, and we are addressing a lot of them exactly through deregulation. Um, in the past 100 days, uh, we passed two laws when it comes to deregulation, decreasing number of activities that require licensing by half, removing enormous amount of permits that were required and involved some bribery and uh, so on. So we are really improving uh, investment climate at quite a fast pace. Last week, government passed a decree of 171 initiatives on deregulation that we'll implement over the course of the next uh, uh, 12 months. So business has to be patient, business has to wait. Um, uh, the war, of course, has to end. Ukraine expects peace, but obviously is preparing for the war. Are you confident uh, that peace will last? It's a very, very fragile uh, ceasefire, obviously, and uh, Minsk uh, two agreements are not ideal, but this is the only agreement uh, that is in place, and we certainly uh, would urge uh, all the parties uh, to, to, to basically um, look at it and um, stick to it. Now, I mentioned you were born in, in Vilnius, the capital of Lithuania, which is a member of the European Union, uh, a, member of, a member of the Eurozone. Uh, is your dream to turn Ukraine into uh, a sort of Baltic country? Uh, obviously, we are trying to get all the best uh, uh, examples of success stories uh, of all over the world. So, for example, on state-owned enterprise reform, I rely very much on the Lithuanian experience. Deputy Minister of Economy of Lithuania is full-time working for me. On the tax reform, we have Ivan Miklos, former Minister of Finance of Slovakia, who successfully did that in Slovakia. He's spending two weeks a month in Kiev working for myself and for the Minister of Finance. 
on uh, public procurement, it's Georgians that we imply, on decentralization, we're working with Swedes because we're implementing the Swedish model. Small and medium-sized enterprises, we are going the Polish way. And we discussed with our French uh, ministers, economy minister and finance minister, uh, what uh, French uh, experience uh, we can use. Yesterday I met uh, Business France, uh, which is an export and investment promotion agency, which is top three in the world, and we certainly want to cooperate with that agency. And you will agree that uh, Ukraine is still far from those uh, standards. Uh, well, actually, this week was an interesting reminder when uh, President Poroshenko decided to fire uh, the governor of the Dnipropetrovsk region. It's a region bordering uh, the Donbass. Um, he was, until recently, a very close ally of the president uh, in fighting the rebels. Uh, but the problem is, like many oligarchs, he's extremely powerful. He interferes uh, in, in politics. Does this show that Ukraine has a huge problem with those oligarchs who act like loose cannons? I, th I would like to disagree. I think uh, even uh, Mr. Kolomoisky himself uh, quite recently said that there is only one oligarch left in the country. The influence of oligarchs has diminished considerably over the past year following Maidan revolution. If you look at the composition of the parliament, 50% of people have never been in the parliament before. The influence on the parliament by the oligarchs has never been lower. And this week we already but it's saw... But still pretty high. And this week we already saw that even, uh, you know, Kolomoisky influence has been diminished. He lost control over Ukrtransnafta. He lost control over Ukrnafta for the benefit of the state. First time in the history of Ukraine, oil from Ukrnafta was sold without a discount. He was a primary beneficiary of that. And why did President that. Poroshenko decide to fire this potential ally in eastern Ukraine? I think he will remain an ally. Uh, he's a true uh, fighter against uh, separatism in the region. And... Uh, uh, we all wish uh, that he stays uh, committed to that cause. But when it comes to broader politics, uh, I think the uh, president is sending a very right signal that, A, uh, its de-oligarchization is happening in the country, along with decentralization and deregulation, and also uh, we are starting to fight corruption. You must have seen yesterday some uh, footage uh, were uh, straight in the cabinet of ministers while I was here in Paris. Uh, two emergency situations ministry officials were arrested uh, on accusations of corruption. I sincerely believe that this is a great start to uh, anti-corruption uh, uh, fight, and uh, I sincerely hope uh, that we will uh, strongly push uh, forward. Uh, you may also have known uh, that in the past week uh, I was head of investigation committee for the wrongdoings in the tax and the customs office and as a result on Monday uh, we announced uh, uh, our findings and as a result we removed top three officials uh, from that uh, office as well. We're looking for new head, possibly looking for a foreigner to head our customs office and here we also count very much on EU support to have joint customs clearance and border checks with the countries that border Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine and that's a legacy of the Soviet period has a bloated public sector. Uh, just to give an example I believe that the uh, Department for Statistics employs more than 10,000 people. 10,450. What do all these people do and how many people do you need to get rid of? Uh, we have enormous amount of people in my ministry alone. We have 1,300 and Statistics Bureau is under ourselves. Old style Soviet reserve where we keep petroleum products and food staples and uh, grain for a rainy day is another 6,000 people. Metrology and standardization institute in every town, 50,000 people. State-owned enterprises, 300 under the ministry, including Antonov with 14,000 people. Uh, obviously, uh, state has too big of a role in the economy and we will try to decrease that. Uh, staff cuts in our ministry alone is going to be 50% this year with 30% staff cuts already in place after one month. Uh, we will work very hard to also pass administrative reform so that those that stay have substantially higher salaries as well and with it uh, possibilities for corruption decrease. Uh, these reforms, of course, uh, will be very unpopular with uh, a large section of the population. Uh, a recent poll shows that a majority of Ukrainians are unhappy with Petro Poroshenko's job as president. Uh, the Prime Minister Arseniy Yatsenyuk is even more unpopular with only a quarter of respondents uh, saying they support him. 
Well, uh, when the country is at war and the economy is in a such a cheap, deep uh, decline, exchange rate deterioration, it is hard to expect that politicians uh, in power uh, are popular. But uh, we are seeing some first uh, good results, and I certainly expect for some more patience. People are ready for some more hardship in exchange for some tangible results. They want to see the light at the end of the tunnel, and they want not only them to take uh, this hardship. They want oligarchs to pay the price, and we are getting rid of some unfair subsidies, unfair preferences for the large business through increased taxation of natural monopolies, and they also want public servants to feel this hardship. So these layoffs in the public sector are actually quite positively accepted by the society. A major issue for many Ukrainians is the price of energy. Uh, can you tell us more about the current talks between Kiev and, and Moscow? Are you hopeful that Moscow will lower the price of its We're not export. necessarily counting on Moscow to lower price because already this year we buy substantially more gas from Europe than from Russia. Russia is no more than 30% of the gas purchased uh, by, uh, by Ukraine at the moment. And the last uh, uh, price uh, that uh, uh, we are discussing is, uh, is already substantially below $300 uh, per thousand cubic meters. As a matter of fact, it's closer to 260. I spoke to Gaz de France uh, yesterday who is uh, supplying a big chunk uh, of gas uh, uh, through um, uh, bordering uh, countries uh, to Ukraine. And they are quite hopeful, the European market is oversupplied, that uh, gas price for Ukraine will remain substantially more attractive from Europe than what Gazprom is, uh, is able to offer. Ivaras Abramovich, I remind our viewers that you are Ukraine's uh, economy and trade minister. Thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you much indeed. And thank you for watching this edition of Talking Europe. Please stay with us on France 24 for more news. Goodbye.